Welcome to episode 6 of The Final Whistle. I'm Drew Ziegler and I'm here with John Grant and James Gagusis. Today we will talk all about the NFL playoffs, the NBA, and finish it off with a short segment about Carlos Correa signing with the Twins. First up, NFC wild card round. Seahawks losing to the 49ers 23-41. to What are your thoughts on that game? I mean, Seattle had it in the first half. We're up 17-16 at the halftime, but they just really fell apart at the, in the second half. I'm a Seattle fan. I'm not that upset about it, though, because, one, the 49ers are an insanely well-rounded team, and, two, people projected us to be a three-, four-win team. We made the playoffs with Geno Smith. So, I mean, the future's bright in Seattle, though, definitely. Yeah, if you're a Seahawks fan, you can't be mad about you know them losing. They played great in the first half. You know they were up. But I mean, in the second half, you really it, the 49ers really showed how well they could play. And they they're definitely gonna be a dangerous team next week against the Cowboys. I think it's gonna be a good game. Yeah, 49ers. I think the best team in the whole league right now won, have won 11 straight since that CMC trade. Obviously, put them over the top. And next, in a thrilling of a game. Giants 31, Vikings 24, just a great game and a great performance by Danny Dimes. Yeah, Daniel Jones had the game of his career. I mean, he was dicing up the Vikings. I mean, the Vikings do have one of the worst defenses in the NFL, but I don't care. I mean, he was dicing them up. Saquon had a great great, great game. And Isaiah Hodgins, I feel like the, his addition really you know, put them over the top of being you know, a really good team. I mean, he was probably the Giants' second best player behind Daniel Jones on Sunday or Saturday. I mean, I think I mean, it's time to give Daniel Jones his respect. I mean, he's done so much this season without a great supporting cast, and now he kind of finds a guy in Hodgins and, now, and Saquon Barkley. It's time to give him his respect. The defense played great, and, I mean, the Giants are a team that I would not want to play in the playoffs. Yeah, the Vikings, they had their moments in that game, but when it came down to it, Justin Jefferson was locked up in the second half by Dory Jackson, and I think that was the difference maker, despite the Giants not being able to cover a tight end for the past, like, 10 years. <laughs> and the Cowboys destroying the Bucks, 31-14. to 14. Dak Prescott with his best game of the year, I think. Yeah, I mean, Dak Prescott looked great. But, um, I mean, the Bucks, they can't run the ball whatsoever. Their offensive coordinator is not good. They're, they're, they, they need a change things up around there. I think there's no way Tom Brady stays in Tampa Bay after this offseason. Tom Brady, if he's going to play another year, he's going to go to a place that he can win a Super Bowl up with, and, and that's not Tampa Bay. Dallas, though, I mean, they look great. I don't know if they're great enough to beat San Francisco because they're, they're just on a roll. Yeah, that was a statement win for Dak Prescott. I mean, he had a lot of critics saying, you know, he can't win the big game, he can't play well. He hasn't been playing you know, he's been turning the ball over the past month or two, but he, he played, like you said, the best game of his career. He had no turnovers, five touchdowns or four touchdowns. This is a really good win for the Cowboys. I'm really excited to see what, how they play against the 49ers next week. Yeah, what Tom Brady does, that'll be a big question mark in the offseason. He might retire again. Yeah, Who knows? I think he'll retire. I, I got that gut feeling. And now we're going to get to the AFC on Saturday night. The Jaguars beat the Chargers 31-30 to and just comeback fashion. What a game. Only the Chargers would lose that one. Yeah, it was an amazing comeback. I mean, Trevor Lawrence, four interceptions. You know, they looked dead in the water. But, I mean, the Chargers, man, I, I don't know what it is with that organization. It sounds like the Mets. I mean, they just blow a 27 nothing lead in the playoffs. You know, that that's unacceptable. I mean, the, the defense played bad, the offense. I mean, you got to give some, you know, you got to give Justin Herbert you know, it's his fault, I think. I think the offense not being able to score in the la second half of the season, I mean, I think it's definitely their fault. I think you're really <laughs> wrong there. I mean, that coaching is terrible. How, they, they do this every other week. I mean, they look, for, they look like a completely different team from the first half and the second half. First half, they were up 27-0. to zero. Trevor Lawrence threw four interceptions. To lose in the playoffs to the Jacksonville Jaguars like that, so to blow a 27-point lead in, in, in one half, that's Staley right there. He, he should have he been out of there last offseason when they didn't make the playoffs off that, that stupid overtime. He, if he doesn't go, I mean, I don't know. I wonder, they have the, the most talented roster in the league. They just have one of the worst coaches in the league. Yeah, yeah, I think he has to be fired already. Joe Lombardi, their offensive coordinator, was already fired. And I think if you put me out there in the first half, I would have been playing better than Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> yeah. But the courage of him to come out in the second half and play like he did, that was just really cool of him. I just think – I think Herbert – I don't think he's getting any of the blame. I think he has to get some of the blame. I don't think – I think Staley does – 
deserve the most blame. But Herbert, I feel like he's been getting like off the hook a little. I think if it was any other quarterback in the league, everybody would be harping on the quarterback not being able to score more than three points in the second half. You could blame whoever you want, but man, they lost the game, yeah. and that is just terrible for them. And the Bills, 34, Dolphins 31, a lot closer of a game than people might think. But Josh Allen and the Bills still come out on top. Yeah, you got to give the, the Dolphins credit. I mean, you know, they were down 17 nothing early, but they kept that game close with Skylar Thompson. You, you got to give them credit where credit's due. With the Bills, I mean, I'm not really sold on them. They, they didn't play great against the, the Dolphins. You know, you'd expect them to win by at least 10 points you know, at home against you know, an injury riddled team. So you know, we'll see next week how they could play, you know, that, that you know, weak performance, in my opinion. I mean, just based off that the, the Bills' performance versus the Dolphins and Skylar Thompson, I think the Bills are going to get drop kicked next week. I mean, you 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 you're, you lose a three, you're at, you're up three points versus Skylar Thompson, a third string quarterback, and the, the Miami Dolphins. They do not look good right now. The Dolphins, you got to give them some respect. You got to give their coach some respect. They they the, the Bills are one of the best teams in the league, and they only lose by three points with a third string quarterback. Yeah, and Skyler Thompson, I do not think he was helped out much. He played well, I think, mm -hmm. and definitely for his standard. And next, their opponent now, the Bills. The Bengals beating the Ravens by seven. They also didn't play too well, though. Um, who's going to win that game, the Bills and the Bengals? I mean, I, I mean, I got, I got Joe Burrow and the Bengals. I just think the Bengals did not play a bad game. I mean, they played a okay game, but it was like, you know, they still they still came out of the game on top. It wasn't as bad as a game as the Chargers or the the uh, the Seahawks, where they lost the game by a lot of points, or they lost the game and by tw when they had twenty seven to zero lead. I mean, Joe Burrow has looked great in the playoffs. There, he's been four and one in the playoffs in his career. I think that the Bengals got this one. Yeah. Um in the Ravens and Bengals game, after the Bills game, I thought for sure, you know, the Bengals, there's no way that they'll be in the AFC Championship game. But I'm not so sure now. They didn't play great against, you know, uh, Lamar, uh, no, no Lamar Jackson Ravens. Um, and then that, that QB sneak call at the two-yard line, that was a terrible call. I mean, it's, and I feel bad for Tyler Huntley. I mean, you know, that was a bad play. But, like, and then your own teammate, J.K. Dobbins, calling you out saying they would have won the game if Lamar was playing. That's got to be tough if you're Tyler D T uh if you're the quarterback for the Ravens. Yeah, that organization's a mess right now. I think Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator, has to be fired. He's just not good. And Lamar's big question, where is he going to go in the offseason? And our next game in the divisional round, Jaguars at Chiefs in Arrowhead. Tough game for Trevor Lawrence. What can they do in that one? Yeah, I mean, the one seed off a of bye, they always come off to a slow start. So I think maybe the Jaguars could maybe, you know, sneak up and behind them, you know, scare them a little and win the game. But I, I think the Chiefs are too good. I wouldn't be surprised if the Jaguars won, but you know I think the safe bet is for the Chiefs to win, and that's just that's just my opinion. I mean, if there's any team that's going to make that upset in the AFC, it's going to be Jacksonville. I think that 100%. I think Trevor Lawrence is here, and he's here to stay. But the Chiefs are just one of the best teams in the league right now. Patrick Mahomes having another MVP season. I don't see the, the Jaguars coming in there and beating them in Arrowhead. Yeah, Mahomes just the best player in the league, and I think he's going to get this one done pretty easily. And we talked about it just before, but Bengals and Bills, um, Joe Burrow and Josh Allen, just great quarterbacks in the AFC. And who do you think is going to win? I got Cincinnati in that game 100%. I think that the Bills, they just can't they can't make it all the way. There's something about, I don't know if it's coaching, I don't know if it's the players. Josh Allen turns the ball over way too much for my liking. I think that the Bengals are a lot more clean team and that they're going to go in there and win. Yeah, like I said before, you know, after the Bills game, I thought the Bengals were for sure going to win. Um, but I, I think the Bills are going to win now. I think they'll make the, the adjustments over this week. You know, they they got a good coaching staff. I think Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. I think they're going to lead them to victory. I think the defense will be a big part of their win. I think they're going to shut down Jamar Chase. You know, in that air raid offense. Yeah, Joe Burrow obviously great in the playoffs, and I also agree with you. I think the Bills are going to win this one. They're going to come out on top, just at home, and I think they're going to win. And now to the NFC side, Giants at Eagles. Just Giants surprised to be here. And could they still win this one, though? Yeah, I I, th I think it'll be a close game. I hope it's a close game. You know, the Eagles it's in, in Philadelphia, it's a hostile environment. It's tough to win there in the playoffs. But I, I think if I had to put 100 bucks on it, I think I'd put the Eagles to win this game. I mean, Jalen Hurts, you know, Jalen Hurts, Devonta Smith, 
A.J. Brown. That's a really, really good offense. You know, I'm not sh- really sure how the Giants' pass defense will be against the Eagles. You know, I, I do think at least one, one seed will lose this week. week. I wouldn't be surprised at all. But I, I just think the Eagles, I think they're going to win. I think they're just a much better team. I'm calling an upset alert here. I got I got the Giants in this one. Just because look how much that defense changed when McKinney's back and Adoree Jackson's back. I mean, they didn't they didn't allow that much from the Vikings. I think that the Giants are in the NFC the team to be the most afraid of right now. They look like that 2007 team when they spoiled the Patriots 17 and 0 season. I think that Daniel Jones is the franchise guy. If if you don't think that Daniel Jones is a Giants franchise quarterback, you just haven't been watching Giants games. Yeah, um, I think the key factor in this game, like I said earlier, Giants can't guard a tight end. Dallas Goddard, he will have a huge game. But I think the Giants could pull this one out. They have no pressure on them. Obviously, a tough environment, but they're just a great team now. And their coach, obviously, coach of the year, Brian Dable, I think. And next, Cowboys at 49ers. Great classic game, like we said earlier. But who do you think is going to win? I mean, I'm praying on the 49ers' downfall, but... They're, they're going to win. I mean, I just don't think that, that the Cowboys and the 49ers are on that same level. The 49ers, I mean, defense wins championships. That's so true. Their defense is the best in the league by a long shot. Like, I, I don't think that Dak Prescott is going to be able to do the same things he did versus Tampa Bay against San Fran. So I think that San Francisco is going to pull this one out. I think this will be the best game of the weekend. I think it's be a close back and forth game. Um, but I got the 49ers to win this one. I mean, they, like John said, their defense is just so good. By, by far the best team in the league. I think they're going to they're gonna contain Dak Prescott, and I think they're going to pull out with the win. Yeah, Kyle Shanahan, mastermind. He knows what he's doing at coach, at head coach. But um, Micah Parsons, if he can get to Brock Purdy, I think that's going to be the difference maker. And I'm n- I think an upset's going to happen. I think the Cowboys are going to win this one. Now we're going to take a short break, and then we will be joined by Steven Kubis to talk about the NBA's hottest and coldest teams. Now we're back and we're going to get into the NBA. First up, um, the hot teams in the NBA, the Thunder. They've been on a roll. 6-2 and two in January with wins over the Celtics, Mavericks, Sixers, and Nets. Just some big wins against great teams. Yeah, it seems like that. Are like Those teams are really hard to beat, especially when they have those dominant stars on the team. But the Thunder, have they're playing as a team. You know, Everybody's been playing a role, their defense and their offense. I mean, their offense has been really outstanding, which is the reason why they've been being those really good teams who also have really good offenses. But I think, and they're very young too, so I think as the years goes on, they'll be a really good team in the future. Obviously, they have a star in the making in SGA. He's just a great player. And Nick, the Knicks, they've been playing well recently, 25-21 and 21 now. Julius Randle had a huge game with 42 points and 15 rebounds against the Pistons, and Jalen Brunson's been playing out of his mind. Yeah, the Knicks, I mean, I watch the Knicks all the time. I love the Knicks. And uh, seeing Julius Randle become lefty LeBron James again is it's quite... It's quite awesome, to be honest. And then ha- adding Jalen Brunson to the equation. You know, we missed him for a couple of games that we were losing, but now we see he's back, and, like, he makes a huge impact on this team. And I think the Knicks are going to make the playoffs this year, and I can't wait to see that. Yeah, he's been worth all the money, in my opinion. And Grizzlies, they're on a 10-game winning streak, 30-13. and 13. They obviously have John Morant, just a great young player, and he'll be there for a while. I mean, yeah, John Morant, I mean, the last couple of games, he's been – I think it's like four poster dunks. Like that's that's crazy. Like a five game span. I mean, and then the Grizzlies are a very quiet team. Like you really don't. No one really talks about them that much. Like a hidden like good team. And I uh, I think they should get more recognition. And yeah, like very young core. Also, Jaron Jackson Jr. Also a great player with Ja. And the Nuggets. They've been playing well. Also, Nikolai Jokic just broke the assists franchise record for the Nuggets. I mean, yeah, it's crazy, especially when he's a center. Like, you really don't see a center. Like, you really hear about, like, rebounds, blocks, and points. But, like, that man can do it all as a center. I think he's probably, like, top three player in the league right now. Probably an MVP candidate for sure. But the, ne- uh, the Nuggets, too, are a really quiet team. And I think that they will make a lot of noise in the playoffs. And then that's, yeah. Yeah, they always seem to be up there in the seedings, but they don't ever make the run in the playoffs. And now we're going to get into some cold teams. The Pacers, they just lost their star, Tyrese Halliburton. He'll be out for a few weeks. And now they're 23 and 23. They've been lo- on a, a few game skid, and they've been losing a lot of games. They aren't playing well. Yeah, I mean, when we first started the show, we, we we highlighted the Pacers as like a young, surprising team being good. But like now, seeing them falling off, it just makes sense. You know, some teams get a little hot start in the beginning of the season, then they they, fall, then they start truly falling into like what their team actually is. And I think that's what the Pacers are. Yeah, they can make some trades. They're still a very young team. These things are going to happen. 
with the Suns, a mature team. Chris Paul's out. They have a lot of injuries. So what do you think about them? I mean, they're missing, like, a lot of players, not just, like, Chris Paul and everything. But I heard they got DeAndre Ian back, which should help a lot because when they're healthy, they're, they're – top five team in the NBA but as you can see like they're losing all they lost all their star players right now so I don't really I can see why they're doing really bad but they should be able to step it up now with one player coming back and eventually the other one's coming back too yeah obviously Devin Booker out hurts he scores the most for them and he's their best player but some hot players as we talked about earlier Jalen Brunson he averaged 35 points a game last week and the Knicks are three and two in their past five games I mean it, it just seemed like every shot he took just just went in every time. Like I feel like every time he took the shot, it went in. I mean, he's playing good defense as well. He's getting a lot of rebounds, a lot of assists. He's just been like a great team player, and I think that's the reason why the Knicks are successful right now. Yeah, and another hot player, DeMontis Sabonis, averaged a triple-double last week and like 16 assists in one game. And then the Kings, 5-0 and in their last five games. They can make some noise. I think if he keeps playing like this, he, he, he's going to carry that Kings team with De'Aaron and Fox, too, because I think th those two are a dominant duo. And if he keep, continues like this, like De'Aaron's playing well, too, I think they can make a nice little, like, eight seed in the playoffs. Yeah, it seems to be like a win-win trade that they did for Sabonis and Halliburton. But Luka, a few, week, uh, a few weeks ago, just a huge game against the Knicks. 60 points, 21 rebounds, and 10 assists, breaking a record. Nobody ever with a 60-point, 20-rebound game. I mean, yeah, it just makes sense. Of course, it's against the New York Knicks, you know. Everything bad is against the Knicks. But, yeah, Lucas has been playing awesome, man. 60 points, like 21 rebounds, 10 assists. Like, that's that's crazy. That's, like, video game numbers. And then he was also putting up 50-point games like it's, like, nothing for him. Like, the past, like, 10 games, I'm, this is like, he's, like, incredible. Yeah, he's the best player in the league, I think. And that's going to do it for us for the NBA. And after the break, we'll be joined by James Gagusis to give our thoughts about the Carlos Correa situation, him signing with the Twins, finally picking a team. Now we're back, and we're going to get into the Carlos Correa situation. Just obviously a weird situation, but what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I think I think the Mets really did a poor job in this situation. I mean, you had the chance to get a top 20 player in the MLB, get him to move from shortstop to third base. You know he wanted to be there. And to just let him off the hook to the Minnesota Twins, Know, his their final offer was six million, six years for 157 million dollars, and he signed the Twins for six years for 200. I mean, they they really mi you know missed a big opportunity. I mean, Carlos Correa was that guy to turn the Mets from a great team to the team you know to be. So uh, it's really disappointing. You know, they easily I, I wouldn't say easily, but they really could have gotten this 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 deal done. So you know, I I'm I'm just really disappointed right now. Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. I think the Mets are smarter in this case. I think that Steve Cohen not spending money on Carlos Correa is good for the future because I think next year they're going to go big on two players, which i rather have than just this one this year. But if all these all these people are saying that he's, he shouldn't be able to play because play he's going to get hurt soon, I think it's pretty smart in the Mets because like, you're going to sign him for six years and then for two seasons he's going to be out because of an injury. Like, I don't know. I think I agree with Steve Cohen on that. But I think it's poor on him signing with the, the Twins because – Twins, like, what are they going to do next six years, right? Yeah, but, I mean, he hasn't had any injury problems with his ankle for, what, his eight-year career. So I, I'm not really sure. I mean, yeah, he could be, you know, injured for the last four years of his contract, but he's also a player, like, really well for the entire contract. So, you know, it's just, it's just a weird situation right now. Yeah. M Steve Cohen obviously shouldn't have said what he did. Yeah. And the Mets were obviously concerned with his physical. They wouldn't have gave him the offer – that they did um they wouldn't have given the six-year offer other than the 13 year but um it's not about the lo whole 13 years it's about that first half of the years that's when you're going to win the championship with him and i think you don't give him the contract at all if you're really concerned with it so when they gave him the sixth year that's a little bit weird yeah i mean another big question mark is third base for the mets i mean you're gonna have eduardo escobar opening day third base i mean he had a good September, but like he wasn't really that guy the entire year. We don't really know. Brett Beatty might even be, well, might not even be on the opening day roster. You know, we don't really know about him. So there's just a lot of question marks about the Mets lineup right now. I think the Mets can put Brett Beatty at third or Ronnie Marucci. Though. I mean, they're all playing really well. Look at his stats from the Dominican League. He's playing out of this world, honestly. I think those stats might put a mark in the Mets coaching staff, and might, he might make the opening day roster. But I think. I think the Mets are smart for not signing a questionable guy who is not going to give you that guaranteed he's going to play. I think if there's a little question in the air, you shouldn't sign him. I think they should just save up for later. Mets obviously didn't 
play well, hit well in their final game, that playoff game. Only one hit. But the Twins didn't get better from this. Carlos Correa was there last year. Yeah. Only like 60-something RBIs, and I don't think they improved much from this. And that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for watching the final whistle, and we will see you next week.